Five, four, three, two, one. Hello and welcome to Create Now. I am here on Vegan Steven, your host. I'm here to show you some guitar playing. Alright, so sit tight, enjoy. I don't know if you're if you're listening or you're watching, but hit that uh, hit that whatever the button is, subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff. Alright, let's see how we're getting on. So we have been talking about single string scales. Chromatic, okay? So I hope you've been practicing doing counting your chromatics. Just uh what is it? Oh, 12 tone scale bop, bop. first position second position third position okay and it's really cool because you can do it on all the strings um let's see <laughs> little e string um oh uh, even the big e string Tighten up this strap. It's a strap height. Okay, where's good? Under the arm. <laughs> I like it. Good and high. Um, how can, I, can you guys see this? What kind of angle would that be? I always have my strap too low, and that's why it keeps falling all over the place. Uh, you want to keep your guitar up close, up close to you. Um, you don't want it down around your ankles. I, anything. The, whatever the opposite is to down around your ankles, you want it up close, tight like a tie, and then but then like kind of loose a little bit, just so you have a little bit of breathing room. But when in doubt, raise it up. I'd say you want to have a oh here's the perfect example. All right, when you if you're sitting down, how high it would be if you're sitting down and leaning over. Do you know the way you kind of sit down, and lean over? That's exactly how high, and your breast needs to be coming out just of, do you know where the, the, the body of the guitar curves down and then it comes back up and then goes into the neck? So well, the guitar just needs to, slot, to, to slide in like another, another piece of it. So you don't want to be fighting it, that's why you need to attach like a part of the body. You can put your hands up, I can put my hands up and the guitar is not really swinging around it's kind of staying anchored more or less with my body now i've been very bold and i don't play like this a whole lot but <laughs> this is the best way to play because you get all that sweet access straight away oh yeah all that sweet access in straight away so positioning is super important the classical players have their guitar on their opposite knee, so um, on their left knee if they're a right-handed guitarist, and they even use our footstools for, for these kind of things. Oh, those kind of things. So. It's very, very important. You guys keep a straight back. Ideally, do not look at your guitar at all. Just don't even, just don't even acknowledge it. You gotta keep, it really has to be just sucked into your body, curved in. That's why I don't like big, big guitars, because they get in the way of my arm, my right arm, my picking hand, getting in, in with the body. That's why I like strap bodies, because they, it has curvature. With the, with the human body. Telly bodies are like a plain of brick of wood. Uh, tellies are my favourite now. So it's a bit of an awkward love. But, uh, and then Gibson bodies are just too fucking heavy. Um, okay, why is all that? Gibson bodies are made out of, ideally made out of mahogany, which is a heavier, denser wood. Ash. Uh, it's harder to work with as well. Mahogany's harder wood to work with. See, people don't like working with true mahogany. Because the tools, you have to sharpen your tools all the time, it's hard to source, it's all this fucking awkward shit. Um, so ash is a much... Mm, 
cheap, it's easy on the tools, it sounds good, and it's, it was never, a guitar making's never really about what sounds the best. It's like, what is the most, what's, what's near the factory, we need one that's near the factory, and that is a, we can get for a good price and all this stuff, because guitar making is a business at the end of the day. You'll get someone having like a specialised product or every once in a while a uh, custom made car or something, but in general it's just too uh, expensive so it's like people don't get custom made cars very often do they? They get like things customised but they get the actual car itself made somewhere Changing your pickups What are pickups? That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> Alright, let's go through our basic chords again. We've got C, A, B, C, D minor, because it's chord 2, B minor chord 3, F chord 4, it's G chord 5, A minor chord 6, B flat, B diminished, <laughs> and to C. Major scale. Do you know your major scale? Let's find out. Alright, so for our major scale. Okay, we're gonna just do our C chord. It's a nice little easy one. We're gonna do our C chord. So the only note that we need, apart from all the notes we're playing on our C chord, is we need to play an F with our, our ring finger on the third fret of the G string. So let's just go through. So it's just, we're going to be doing just the only notes that are in our C chord, lovely, and we're going to play the third fret on the D string once. That's the only note we're going to play with our ring finger. Okay, so play the third fret on the D string there with your ring finger. That's the only note we're going to add. Okay, and the, you already know the scale. It's Do, Do, A, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Sing it if you don't already know it. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. And you can also do all the modes with this. Um, for example, do a dear, a That's the second mode. That's the Dorian, and then we're into Phrygian. We're into Dorian. One before Ionian and then Phrygian or something. We'll get into that. <laughs> Phrygian is the fourth mode, so one, two. We'll have to look at it. I think it's. Anyway, one thing is But you made your scales all you need, okay? So let's go over this. We're gonna learn it. You already know it? Just keep it. You, okay. Here we go. For the very first note, Do. Where is that? We're gonna play the first note of our C chord, okay? And that first note of our C chord is the ring finger on the A string, 3rd fret. I'm sure we'll go over how to do a C chord real quick. <laughs> Alright, C chord. You need three fingers. You need your ring finger on the A string, 3rd fret. You need your middle finger on the D string, 2nd fret. You need an open G string. And you need an index finger on the B string, 1st fret. And that lovely open little E string. Let's hear that one more time. No B E string. So that ring finger, 3rd fret on the A string. Middle finger on the D string, 2nd fret. Open G string, 1st fret index finger on the V string first fret and finally that little E string open all day long. Okay and once again the only note that we're going to add to this apart from open strings is the ring finger doing the F which is the ring finger on the D string. Okay so here we go. So here we go. <laughs> first note. Bang. Ring finger 
It's the note C. Um, and also it's good to know that all the notes you already hit down, or you're, they are strumming right now, are either the note C, octaves of it. So here's the note C. You've got two of them. Two notes C, though. They're an octave apart. What else do we have? And that's the, the, that's the, the first note of the chord scale. Now we also have the G, which is the fifth. And where is the G? The G is... open G string, that's the fifth, and then finally we have the the E, which is the third, which is the third, the color note, major minor. So you got your one, you got your five, and you got your three. So that's uh, one, three, five. Okay, so notes are doubled on the guitar. If that was on piano, it would be. Uh, what chord are you playing? C. Is this piano one? Here we go. On guitar, it's. Lovely. Okay, so we already know where our notes 1, 4, and 5 are. Oh, all we have to do is add the other ones. Here we go. So the first note we're going to start off is the note one, and that's C. So that's C. The next note we need is D, so that's the open G string. So that's C. We know fret that note. Open G string is the second note. On to three, which is an E, and that is E. So C, D, E, C, and two, three, C, D, E, D, E, C, and two, three, okay? Um, that's the first three notes. Now we have to go on for our F. Now our F, we've talked about that already. F is that ring finger, that note which is not in that E chord, okay? It's very bold, it's that four. <laughs> All right. One, two, three. Already halfway through. Now we gotta go to that fifth, and what's the fifth of C? It's G all day long. So th there it is, open G strings. We got C, A, D, E, F. What's the fifth of G? C. It's G. And now we gotta go into our second fretted note which is not in the C chord, whoops, which is E G A A that's the note, A hey. which is the sixth note B which is the seven and then finally H which is C again. Alright? So do re mi fa so la ti do C A E F G A C You can also do it in single string runs, which is really cool as well. <laughs> oh, nice. um. So yeah. So that's a very important scale. Um, you need to know them in all the keys. So good luck with that. That's gonna take a while. Um What else can we do 
go over. I guess we'll just keep doing that. So, let's do it again. Third fret, A string, third fret. It's the, the note one. Onto our second note, it's D. That's open D string. And the third note is middle finger on that D string, second fret. Moving on to note four. It's that ring finger rocking out on the third fret of the D string. What's this? It's the fifth of C, it's a G. It's an open string. Um, <laughs> now we're on to that middle finger on the G second fret, which is of course a, an E. An A, excuse me. An A, which is the sixth. Seven is the B and C. Back to the start, C, octaves, alright, beautiful, alright, if you want to do any of that stuff, you just do C, Fast chord changes, C. Alright. <laughs> so, let's look at that. Sorry, I just mean it's a little bit hard. But that's, uh, it's inspirational. You can also just do it by, if you do your C chord, here's an easy way to do it. You do your C chord, and you, you do your C slash 5. Your C5, which is an inversion, okay? So we're putting the, the G, do you know the way the G is the fifth of C, yeah? Lovely. So all we're doing is putting the fifth below the root. So now it's C slash G. Instead of just calling it, I know you should just call it C with a G, or whatever you're thinking, but it's the, it's the fifth below, but the bass line is changing. It's becoming unstable. So it's become a slash, a slash chord. So what we can do is alternate. That means change between every other time. So it's like dancing with your left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, left foot, right foot. Left foot, right foot. All right. You can go A string. E string, A string, E string, A string, E string, A string. Okay? So you normally do your C chord, you're just moving that ring finger up and down. I'm picking it. A string on the third fret, G string on the third fret, A string on the third fret, G string on the third fret. That's all that's going on. Bum, 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 bum. It's a bass line. Just that, and every so often, on the ands, you're gonna strike the chord, the C. This is the bass line. It's pretty fast. <laughs> All right, let's try it with C. One. So what you're doing is you're striking down on the bass note of C, then you're striking up on the chord C, then you're going to strike down on the single note G, which again is just moving that ring finger up to the third fret on that big E string, and then on the and you're going to strike the chord. So on every and you're going to strike the chord. So one and two and three and four and three, and three. just like reggae. 
It's on the half beat. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And now the number is you hit the bass line. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. So this is very fast, I know. But <laughs> put together it's a one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and four and okay. Slowly bass note chord bass note chord bass note chord bass note chord down up down up down up down up so we're just doing a C chord we're just moving that ring finger between the third fret on the C on the A string where nobody is and the third fret on the E string down Real fast, one, no, I say, one and two and three and four. All right, all day long. And anybody who wants to learn the Jaws theme for their next few days after the coronavirus, it's just the same tone. So you just hit. Index finger on the first fret right there, and then open, open E string. Alright, but I don't think I could say the J word because oh, we'll get we'll get locked down for uh, copyright or something. Who knows? Alright, so we've talked about the strap height. Okay, it's so important because otherwise you'll do all sorts of horrible damage to your shoulder, tendonitis, just. Bad times, not ha happy, fun times, people, okay? Straight back is very important, straight neck, healthy diet is always good. Um, one of the biggest killers for musicians is stress. It goes for everyone in the world, really. Because you get to, you go in all stressed out, you're terrified playing a gig, you're all tight, and then you, you're jumping around, but you're all tight, um, and then you pull a muscle, and you're out of action for the next week or two. Um, and it happens to the best of us. We think, ah, oh, we're only we're only going out for one song, it'll be grand. And yeah, I don't know. It's all grand until you have to uh, be doing a gig every day. And then you're like, oh Jesus. <laughs> I'm not in a world class shape here. But you listen. Let it on off this is my thing. Keep that uh, guitar beside your bed. In front of the TV. Oh, it's, honestly lads, this is so nice up here. It's just my dream. It's Have it up, up, up high. Uh, have a look at Kiss Guitarist. I don't know his fucking name. Uh, it's up very, very high. Jimi Hendrix, guitar very, very high. Bad Lads, Slash, guitar is way too low. Back pain. Uh, Billy Joel, back pain. Uh, too low, damaged himself. Uh, Blink-182, horrific back pain. Um, Tom DeLong, having his guitar down low. All the low these guitars, especially if they're playing Gibsons. Back is fucked. Really, really, really bad. Now, when I say fucked, uh, I mean they have stuff like a spinal bifter. I can't remember. It's just if you're if you're having if you're carrying a heavy guitar and then you don't have good posture on top of that, it's like they're carrying a heavy weight on a bent back for a long periods of time. So if you got, uh, I think like it's fine to play a Gibson or whatever if you if you have it. If you're holding yourself up properly, it's just like basic kind of not. It's for yoga and good body stuff. You know the way you hear all your parents go, or grandparents or whatever. Oh, sit up straight and all this stuff. You're like, ah, it'd be grand. Well, if you don't, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Even stuff like looking down at your phone wrecks your neck. Wrecks your neck. I'm not saying don't go on your phone, but. You change the position to where you don't have to. 
It's all about the past of least path of least resistance. Resistance. It's in all the kung fu films and all that stuff. That's why I talk about using the least amount of possible pressure possible to play guitar. That way you can play guitar all day, every day. If you use very poor technique, you'll wear yourself out in like 15 minutes. <laughs> Just like other things which I won't mention. Um, and if you're an absolute master and you know exactly the amount of force to use, you can go for hours. That goes around them. Singing, concerts, swimming. Um, so, man, I love changing chords really fast. You gotta try it out. It just it sounds so good, like. Maybe if it was a bit slower, but um, it's like playing guitar riffs, but using chords, it's mad. It's kind of hard to... I'm, trying to, I'm constantly trying to not play songs, <laughs> famous songs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to. Uh, you wouldn't understand. It's still copyright law. Money messing. All right. So yeah, I'd recommend you use a very very hard plaque. Don't be using a soft one. Um, I think when people start out, they use a soft plaque, and then the older, more mature, they have to start. I'm using a metal plaque right now. Now. I think you need a few bob to be using a metal plaque, to be honest. Because your strings just start crying. Uh, <laughs> back here. Um, but it really, for me, using a heavy plaque frees up... It's just like moving... Can you imagine? It's just... Um, it's the most accurate way. It's like a direct line. A direct feed to the string. Whereas if you're using something flabby, you have to use loads of force and it's not... Um, the amount of force equals the amount of force the string gets. But if you use a soft plaque, you can use a, lo a lot of amount of force and because of the string isn't, the plaque isn't very efficient um, in converting energy or whatever. Um, you can have to use a lot of force on a tiny little plaque. So what I'm trying to say is if you use a very efficient medium, such as metal, you don't have to use as much force. If you're trying to like lift weights with a lot of feathers instead of lifting weights with like, <laughs> yeah, I think you get the idea. I love using metal back the mode. I don't have to. I don't have to. I don't have to dig in, and it's like it's so reactive. But you really kind of got to know what you're doing, unfortunately. So listen, in hindsight, we don't, I know people don't have the money to be blowing uh, money on high maintenance things like metals, uh, plex. So what I would say is a heavy plastic plectrum is good, one millimeter. Um, to be honest, I'd use that for strummer, for strummer playing maybe, not for lead. For me, I'd want a really, really, like a, a brick. I don't know, just, the older you get, it's just one of those things, the stronger a plaque you want. You'll understand when you're older. You know, it's like going through your multiple phases of wah pedals. The older you, the, the more you play guitar, you'll go through different phases of wah pedals. You know you're a proper guitar god when you've, Bought a wah pedal and sold it about seven times. You fall in love with wah pedals and then I never, never use them one again. And then you fall in love with one again and you go, oh fuck! How could I be so wrong? <laughs> I think that's the main test for like, if you're a good guitar player or not. That and if you like your DS one, if you, if you, if all you need is a DS one tube screamer, uh, a strap, or a teddy, Roxy C thirty. 
I'm giving away all the tips here. I said too much. <laughs> Alright, so listen, have an awesome day. Practice, 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 practice. Don't be disheartened. It's all just a bit of fun, lads. Um, but if you just play guitar while you're binge watching fucking Netflix, man, it's fucking grand. I'm not even. I was talking about just strumming it in your hand and going over two chords, man. Fucking handy. That sounds good as well. Alright, all the best. <laughs>